In December 17th, 1903, the Wright brothers flew for 12 seconds and changed the world forever. But here's what they couldn't predict. Dogfights, 9-11, drone strikes. Because once the technology takes off, no one controls where it lands. And right now, we're making the same mistake with AI. AI won't take over because it's evil. It'll take over because everyone building it, governments, corporations, hackers, are all pulling in different directions. And when these systems collide, humanity loses the tug of war. Today, AI isn't one thing, it's a battleground. So let's meet the players. Right now, over 60 governments and 70,000 corporations are building AI with no master plan, no breaks. And when the systems collide, the takeover won't look like Terminator. It'll look like a stock market crash. No one can stop. Pandemic, no one can cure. A war, no one declared. Governments want AI for one reason, power. The US and China are in an arms race to build autonomous weapons, spy systems, and propaganda machines. But here's the problem. Military AI isn't designed to be safe, it's designed to win. And in war, the first casualty is always ethics. As countries vie for technological dominance in AI, international discussions and regulations on its use in warfare become increasingly important. While AI's integration into military operations is advancing, the effectiveness and potential risks require careful considerations by commanders. Meanwhile, Big Tech's mantra is scale first, ask questions later. Thiel's notes on how to build the future illustrate how much scaling has become an obsession of innovation discourse and with the contemporary social, political, and economic life at large. Uber, one of the most notorious examples of platform capitalism and its accompanying gig economy, provides a telling starting point for an illustration of what the current scalability zeitgeist entails. The company has pursued aggressive scale first to ask questions later strategy, running years and billions of losses, engaging in predatory pricing and counting on network effects to bring exponential growth and eventual winner takes all profits. Within little more than a decade, the company has infiltrated the transport systems of 900 cities in 85 countries and become one of the world's largest transportation companies with 75 million active users and 3 million registered drivers. More recently, Uber has also pushed its platform as a solution in adjacent sectors, including food and goods delivery. OpenAI admit their models are getting smarter, but no one knows how they work. And when profits depend on being first, safety checks deprioritized. Just ask Facebook. And then the wildcard, garage tankers. Right now, anyone can download models like Lambda 3 and train them to do, well, anything. No rules, no oversight. It's giving every 14-year-old a nuke, and hopefully they'll use it for homework. The Wright brothers thought they were inventing transportation. They did, but they also didn't foresee airlines, missiles, or 9-11. Same, we're building tools that will outgrow us. The government won't stop. They're terrified of losing the race. Corporations won't stop. Their shareholders won't let them. And hackers, they're just getting started. This isn't a conspiracy. It's capitalism, it's geopolitics, it's human nature. The scariest takeover is in violence, it's dependence, and we'll hand over our decisions, relationships, and even our memories, and thank the machines for the privilege. When these AIs collide, there won't be war of humans versus machines, it'll be Google AI versus China's AI, or some kind of Estonia's AI, all optimizing for different goals, all rewriting their own rules, and we'll be bystanders begging for scraps from systems that see us as irrelevant. So how do we survive? Option one, we can perform some sort of global treaty, but let's be real, we can't even agree on climate change. Option two, ethical AI. But too bad ethics don't scale. Option three, unplug, go analog. But who here could last a day without Google Maps? The hard truth, we're the Wright brothers, but this time the plane is flying itself and the only way out is to build a damn control tower before it's too late. In 10 years from now, we could all be living in a world where artificial intelligence runs most aspects of our lives. AI is evolving and at an unprecedented rate, and the stakes couldn't be higher. In just a few months, we've seen OpenAI's ChatGPT reach over 100 million users. Venture capital investments into AI startups skyrocketed from just 408 million in 2018 to an astounding 25.2 billion in 2023. We're seeing a surge in both competition and innovation from large corporations, government startups, and even individuals who are all racing to shape the future of AI. Yet, 
The pace of its evolution raises a critical question. As AI grows more powerful, are we going to do enough to ensure that we can keep it on track? With so many competing interests at play, corporate giants with their agendas, governments with their regulations, and startups aiming for market dominance, there's a real concern that the rapid rise of AI could spiral into something beyond control. But what do we do about it? Can we safeguard AI from taking us over, or is it too late to steer the course? Artificial intelligence is no longer the stuff of science fiction. It's here. It's growing faster than anyone could have imagined. Take, for instance, the advancements made by Anthropics Claude. AI isn't just an enhancement to our tools anymore. It's becoming the foundation of the modern economy. And yet, as powerful as it is, the driving force behind its development is driven by competing interests. Large enterprises see AI as an opportunity to revolutionize industries, streamline operations, and increase profits. Governments are looking to AI for societal progress, regulation, and national security. Meanwhile, startups are attempting to capture a piece of the pie. Innovations that could disrupt entire sectors. This competition in the AI space is dynamic, but it's also filled with risks. The question is, can this race towards innovation remain healthy? Or will it lead to monopolization by a few powerful players? But let's take a step back and look at the broader picture. The nature of foundation models, those underlying frameworks that power many AI systems, creates a scenario ripe for consolidation. These models are expensive to develop, requiring massive data sets, significant computing resources, and a depth of expertise that only a few entities currently possess. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that the more powerful AI becomes, the more likely it is that the entire AI ecosystem could be dominated by only a handful of players. We're already seeing this consolidation with large firms like OpenAI, Google, and Microsoft. Particularly foundation models benefits from what's called increasing returns. This means the more data you feed into an AI model, the better it gets, which leads to even more data and on and on, a virtuous cycle. So companies that already have built up vast data sets can redefine their models. They grow stronger, more efficient, more capable, while smaller players struggle to keep up. And this could lead to a few dominant entities controlling the entire space, stifling innovation in the process. The fear is that AI could be monopolized by just a handful of corporations. Think of it like this, we're on the edge of a massive industrial revolution, but in this case, the question is, who gets to own the factory? And that leads to an essential question. What role do governments play in this rapidly evolving landscape? As AI continues to reshape our world, we need policies and regulations that ensure it remains innovative, ethical, and most importantly, under human control. In the past, this technology has advanced rapidly without enough foresight into its social impacts. The rise of big tech companies in the 1990s and 2000s was largely unchecked until the consequences became undeniable. Issues of privacy, monopoly power, and data misuse led to intense public outcry and eventually regulation. AI follow the same path or we take proactive steps to ensure that AI remains a tool that benefits society rather than one that controls it. Policymakers are already working on AI regulation, but it's still in the early stages. The European Union, for instance, has proposed the Artificial Intelligence Act, which aims to regulate high-risk AI applications while encouraging innovation. The US has already begun discussions about AI regulation, though the regulatory framework remains much less developed. Regulation is not just about limiting power of corporations or governments, it's also about fostering an environment where innovation can flourish. If the AI market becomes too tightly controlled, it risks becoming stagnant. The challenge for policymakers would be to strike a balance between regulation and allowing dynamic, competitive forces that drive innovation. Despite the optimistic forecasts, we must also address the risks of losing control over AI. The reality is that we might be heading into an era where AI systems not only automate tasks, but start making decisions that impact every facet of our lives. And what happens when AI algorithms determine hiring decisions, medical diagnoses, or legal outcomes? These systems can amplify human biases, make decisions we don't understand, and almost certainly perpetuate inequalities. In the worst case, we might be entering an era where AI systems grow so advanced that they operate beyond human oversight. Imagine an AI that can outthink, outsmart any human or group of humans, and at that point, it's not just a tool, it becomes a force. Could we then risk AI becoming an autonomous entity with goals that don't align with human welfare? 
And this is why it's crucial that we not only develop AI with careful oversight, but also ensure that those who develop and deploy AI do so with clear sense of ethics and responsibility. This means creating transparent AI models, ensuring data privacy, maintaining human in the loop systems where AI is always supervised or checked by humans before critical decisions are made. Ultimately, the question isn't whether AI will take over, but rather how we ensure that we enhance our lives without diminishing our autonomy. For AI to truly serve humanity, it needs to remain a tool and not a ruler. To safeguard against risks of AI monopolization and misuse, we must have a mechanism in place that ensures diversity of thought, transparency, and accountability. Hopefully, governments do work hand in hand with the private sector and academia and the public to create a framework that supports innovation while preventing any single entity from holding too much power. Perhaps most importantly, we must prioritize human values in AI development, ensuring that AI aligns with the values of fairness, transparency, and ethics. As we stand on the precipice of an AI-driven future, it's up to us to shape the future. AI has the potential to be a force for good, driving productivity, enhancing creativity, and solving some of humanity's greatest challenges. For that to happen, we must remain vigilant. The rise of AI isn't inevitable in the way that it takes us over. It's inevitable in the way that we allow it to grow and the frameworks we build around it. So the question remains, will we control AI or will AI control us? And the only way that we can get through this fam is together. So I invite you to be a part of the journey if you haven't taken a moment, I ask that you support our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing our video to someone that you think might find it interesting or valuable. Until next time.